Okay, hello everybody and welcome back to another, to the fifth part of uh, making a game. Alright, so we'll just jump right into it, because right now, having some other issues. Uh, let me see here, hold on. Let's get that display capture 2 out of here so we can see my desktop, my main desktop that is. Uh, and yeah, yeah, I was gonna open up that. I'm just making sure that okay, yep, it hasn't finished installing it. Yay, thanks, Epic Games Launcher. All right, so, anyways, with that in mind, last time we were here, we were working on this test map and we got some stuff done with the material. So, we have a little turret that rotates around on our little player here. Still need to figure out the lighting, uh, it'd be nice to get that sort of fixed out. Um, but we did also create this uh, visual system that makes sure that the player is always visible on the screen. Um, you also got the enhanced input working, of course. So quite a lot of uh, good progress from last time. But now what we have right now is just sort of an empty level with just a cube pretty much. So. I think next we are going to start working on getting a level design set up. So uh, just a quick disclaimer, I am not, haven't really done too much in terms of level design. So I'll try my best, but um, well, we'll just see where we end up. So yeah, uh, once we do the level design, we'll be uh, sort of thinking about how we're going to develop the core gameplay mechanics. Um, so with that in mind, let's go back to here. There we go. And check on Epic Games. Is it downloading? Okay, it's Quixel Bridge. All right, so I'm going to launch up the project I was going to launch up before. Um, not the same one from last week, unfortunately. Uh, just have to figure that one out. But anyways, so here we go. We're in our note-taking app um, that we've used before as well. Um, and I got a very, uh, this tablet's kind of old, um, kind of inaccurate. There we go, okay, that's a little bit better. Uh, we don't need the pressure sensitivity or anything like that, but, oh boy, that's gonna take a while. Um, ooh, wow, you can, you can definitely hear it through the mic. Thanks, yep, okay, in case you're wondering this, uh, where's my mouse? This Asus software um, that I use for the mic filtering, yeah, it just hasn't been working today. So ridiculous. Um, yeah, so uh, with because of that, um, yeah, I can hear background noise. And oh boy, is my computer lagging! Great. Yep, this is this is exactly good for a live stream. In case you're wondering, uh, if I, I am a display capture too. There you go. Yep. That's what happens. But what I want to do is take this process here and just click on task because annoyed of that. End of the elites. What's that news article? All right. Uh, let's see if the noise filtering stop. <sighs> okay, one second just hide that real quick okay there we go all right so what we have here uh, we have a little player with a little turret there we go there's our little player with the turret so they are I'll make this nice and big so they're about a uh, yay big oh unknown error great great just great all right so what kind you're kidding me you're kidding me check for update update now I've already clicked update now update 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 you stupid software all right <clears throat> sorry about that uh it's wrong button okay screen's a bit messy but all right so let's look back at so i just drew a rectangle i know um look back at we what we have for the initial notes we have here all right, gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's see here. Where are they? There they are. Okay. So, what makes a game a game? Uh, the game design, pretty much. Um, so yeah, I was talking about the laser tag game. Uh, this was way back in the first live stream. 
Uh, it says update now again. Um, <clears throat> don't worry about that. Uh, where's my mouse? So many desktops. Okay. Um, yeah, so over here, right here, this is sort of the ideas that we have. So, like I said originally, they can change it over time. So, this isn't final. And in fact, I think they probably will change over time. Because. I'm not entirely confident about how well a laser tag based game can work on mobile, but I think something. Oh, did it actually update? No, it didn't. Let me get some water. So, anyways. One thing I am gonna show off. There we go. Wow, that's. Let me turn it up a bit. So you can actually hear. There you go. Wow, my mic is like picking up every single sound. Okay, maybe it's too loud. Alright, so, anyways, what you're hearing is. Um, by Steve Journeys, uh, some nice synthwave music. Uh, Steve is the composer um, that I'm working with for Project Laser Tag, so hopefully soon this isn't um, necessarily the sort of stuff that you'll be hearing in, uh, in that game when we start uh, sort of announcing that. We're getting, uh, we're getting that ready for that soon, so stay tuned for that, but um, you will be definitely composing the music and um, yeah I think some of the work that he's doing is gonna be uh, pretty pretty great actually so I yeah, hope you uh, enjoy this uh, nice background music and some of the other future stuff anyways so yeah just a little heads up there um, let's go back to let's go back to clicking the update button again for the 50th time on this piece of software that doesn't like to work. <clears throat> uh, let's see here, what other, oh, armor, yeah, okay, I'll just end that task. End task, uh, end task, end task, okay. You know, sometimes on Windows you can end a service, but then the program that relies on that service doesn't know how to restart it, even though it's like the basic, one of the most basic things that you can possibly do. It's so dumb. Um, anyways. I distract myself. So back to the level design. Yes. All right. So we already have some little bit of level design right here. So right here, this was just a sort of basic concept for one of the maps. I'm going to go with a. Oh my god. I'm going to go with a highlighter so that we can actually see it. There you go. All right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Now <sighs> again. Update, come on, update, okay. I want my mic to be working. I'm filtering sound. Alright, anyways. I think that's loud, too loud, too loud, too loud. Let me turn that down a bit. Okay, there we go. Alright, that's not that bad. I mean, those media players, by the way, uh, not bad. Okay, so yeah, uh, that's a yellow highlight. You can barely see it, but it doesn't matter point is we already have sort of a basic idea of what the level structure and layout will be so I think some of the key features let's go back to our level design page here so I'm gonna go type over here level design all right there we go all these cables are getting in the way um, they don't need ooh, whatever uh, I'm just going to keep this over here so you can watch me click the update button every single time it pops up. Um, meanwhile, we're at a thousand shades left for the project that I want to show off this live stream. So that'll open up soon. We'll uh, start talking about the level design of that project because it will have, we will see some similarities to um, how we're going to start this off. Anyways, so uh, why don't actually let's look at what I did last week. So last week we have we placed uh, cubes. In rectangles around the map. So this, I think, will work well for a nice organized grid layout. 
Oops, we didn't look at that because I was showing the display. There we go. So yeah, that was what we did last week. So yeah, let's look for it's. Yeah, you know, let's go here. Let's change this format background. Let's make it a grid. All right, this will just help out for. Even if you're not gonna make a level that's based off of a grid. Um. Even though, even if you're not gonna make a level that's based off of a grid, this will help out for doing scale. So you should have some sort of a grid layout so that when you transfer the map that you draw here into the engine later on, um, it's more of a one-to-one -one scale uh, replica. And something that I'm going to sort of point out um, what we are specifically doing here because they're not just any sort of level design we are going to be doing what is known as white boxing so this is making the layout of the level but without why why did it stop typing why is it stop typing layout of the level I miss I'm okay layout of level there we go without fine details so regarding the details, mm. definitely getting some drop frames there. Apologies. I think um, we have our project. There it is. Yep. Okay. All right. So the game I'm going to show off uh, just opened up. In case you're wondering, and it has some work to do. Oh boy. Oh boy. Uh, Alright, well, while that works out, we're gonna go back to talking about white boxing. So, white boxing is making the level of the layout without the fine details. Why would we do this exactly? Well, details is equal to time and they require planning pretty much that is what a white box essentially is it is a plan for the details and design it also is the like the core or the root layout of a level so like a general design and this is important because it will sort of it will t dictate how players that go about pretty much playing the level. We'll play level. So some of the considerations to do. Considerations. We have size. We have features. We have uh, spatialness, I guess. I don't know how how to describe that. Um, space. There we go. And, um, yeah, that's actually, I think that's a good sort of overall description of <clears throat> the levels. We'll change space to also include maneuverability. Alright. So the first item that I have here is size. So there's different level sizes, small, medium, and large. But how do you define the sizes? How do you define that? That's a good question. So a good metric is player um, count, pretty much. So in a multiplayer game, how many players can play on a level at once. So take something like a battle royale, for instance, that um, usually has like 60 or so players. The maps are gonna be pretty large. And then in contrast, you take a smaller game, like a 6v6 game, for instance, um, like Overwatch or uh, Valorant, for instance, um, Apex Legends mixtape modes. Uh, those maps are quite a bit smaller. Um, now, why, why exactly would you want to do that? Just, uh, you know, by any chance, I mean, 
why not make a small level but put 100 players in it? Well, um, it has to do with the balance, pretty much. Balance between... Um, how do I describe it? So, if it's... If you have it be too small, you run into the risk of um, players running into each other constantly engage with each other no break in combat interaction so if the, yeah with the smap being too small or too many players as well too small i said too small didn't i yep i did okay too small slash uh many players There's no breaks in the comment or the interaction. If you try, like, let's say, take an MMO for instance, you want to go and you want to go sell your items or whatnot. Um, in a super small map in a market, some place that's like gonna be super popular, you just have a bunch of players just standing around trying to get whatever they want to get done done. And it's generally just a sort of big mess. Luckily for like something like an MMO, you're not necessarily directly interacting with other players you could but that's you can also play sort of uh, I guess alone um, depending on what the like MMO is um, the player interaction varies pretty much um, so yeah um, take a multiplayer game though um, I don't know if you might have uh, played on like a map that's too, with too many players. It's actually too small for the number of players designed for before in the past, but um, I have occasionally. Um, say, take a just a square room, a box. So there's a box. Two player spawns on two teams. We have we now let's shove in. Just a bunch of players so here's a bunch of players here just pack them in there and then on the other team too it's a bunch of players what do you think is gonna happen here if they're like enemies they're gonna shoot at each other back and forth it's just gonna be a mess everybody's just gonna die and then they're just gonna respawn they're gonna respawn and suddenly the people who remain alive here over in the corners here they're gonna be able to get the res people who are gonna respawn and then it's just gonna be a continuous loop over and over and over of respawning respawning rather than playing play no playing you know play in this sort of case on the map is small all right so now what about when it's too big or too few players too big slash few players we have the opposite lack of interaction engaging with other players pretty much so now so now you know we have this other map now it's a giant map there's a little play right down there and then on the other side of the map completely opposite my stylus is bad but there's another player and then in order to get from A to B you need to go all the way around here around this complicated little map let's say like there's a rock here or something there's another thing here or whatever it's a whole bunch of obstacles in your way this isn't really that sort of engaging you might even forget that you're playing single player in the first place there's also not just also not just um applicable to multiplayer too so in terms of a single player small maps can end up with uh too much to figure out what to do or not enough to do pretty much 
with big maps too much time to do stuff pretty much when you take a look at some like let's say single player games and just connect this thing real quick um take a look at some various single player games i'm sure you've uh, played some games like for instance red dead redemption 2 that map is pretty big the thing about red dead redemption 2 is that if you are walking in the middle of the map um, this varies to different levels of degree but it's not just like a plain empty field like you're like you're in Minecraft and you're trying to cross the ocean before they came out with an ocean update. No, no, instead you can look around, you can see trees, you can see plants, you can see other people walking across like in the past. Occasionally you're gonna run to like wolves or pigs or cows. Uh, I don't know if there's any cows in Red Dead, um, but. Uh, horses, other horses too, um, just like general animals and whatnot. And all that stuff there, it fills in the gaps in the map between traveling from point A to point B. If you, say, get bored at one point, you can stop by the road and, uh, and stop by the road and uh, do some hunting, for instance. Or maybe you can help out somebody along the side of the road. That sort of little detail, little interaction is part of the map design in something like Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, now, going back to that Minecraft example, so is so are giant oceans. Um, the thing about Minecraft is it is procedurally generated. And that can be challenging to trying to get this sort of um, balance here as well. So... <clears throat> In Minecraft, you have instead biomes. So these biomes create the different sort of levels of interaction with the world and with the various creatures that spawn and whatnot. If now there's different options in Minecraft for different sizes of the biomes, you can have small biomes that last only a few chunks. Um, in which case, let's say you want to go and find some resources in the biomes, you're probably not going to find a whole lot. You're going to be like, Oh, I chopped down every single tree in this biome. Now I'm next to some desert and then some forest um, winter biome. That's completely useless to me, for instance. In that case, there's a lot to do, but not enough to do one thing that you want to do. So what would you maybe do instead? And um, say like a small biome map. Um, make do with what you have to do. You can go around and explore. But in the end, you're putting a lot of small content in a large world. Eventually, it's going to be overwhelming pretty much. So that's another thing actually that I think is good. So there's also a sense of internal balance. And this goes more into the space category. Um, <clears throat> how do you fill a map with uh, content? We'll talk about more about that later. Um, but going back to the Minecraft example, then you have, let's say, large biomes. Now you have endless jungle forest, for instance. And there's no end in sight and then you don't want to be a jungle anymore there's nothing much that you can do about that though unfortunately you're just going to be stuck with trees upon trees upon trees pretty much of course then minecraft is an infinite world well not purely infinite but quite large um hmm Corporate level design, planning size. Uh, I think I put this in different, in the wrong spot. How will players will play the level balance? So I'm gonna move balance back under the size category because I think I might have clicked out of that. Okay. Anyways, 
so features uh, is the next option so features are anything special special and unique for the level so not necessarily like this one feature is only in this level they are um, specific interactions placed uh, str stra in level so let's say Mario Kart for instance that has a lot of these sort of features in the levels so the most common one would be say an item box now where are these item box placed so let's uh, talk about yeah MK example item boxes so typically with Mario Kart 8 item boxes are paced um, rather evenly it's made this way to sort of um, incentivize yeah incentivize players to use the items wisely let's say like before a jump or a turn maybe after a while get another item to sort of uh, mix things up and refresh things if you have an item box every single inch in Mario Kart 8 that's not going to be that fun because then you're just facing off with a bunch of items so Mario Kart is designed to balance between racing and items pretty much because I mean yeah the items are definitely part of like the racing itself but more of the idea I guess not racing I go with driving that's okay yeah so the items themselves aren't related in most ways to the actual driving of the players in the carts <clears throat> some other sort of um, features in a level can be like say a jump pad for instance to get a player to be able to access a height so why would you add a jump pad in a certain spot um, to for the player to be able to utilize the level design that's a good reason for you for implementing features into the level player should be able to utilize level design to advantage with features So you have a jump pad, the player can get up to the high ground. Now that they are on the high ground, if they prepare themselves with like a appropriate weapon, they can take advantage of that, pretty much. What else? Um, yeah, so the features are the little fine details that are going to be in the level for the player to pretty much interact with and um, use up. Alright, I'm going to do a quick little thing here and for everyone there we go okay so now yeah all right here we go okay so the features are definitely going to be part of the white boxing now during the white boxing period though um, the features are probably not gonna be complete Um, they're going to be like beta look style and that ability too. <clears throat> the idea for placing the features and setting this up, this is just for testing pretty much. We want to be able to incorporate different aspects of what we plan on implementing for the final release game as we go along and then once we um, more refine the style and level and the gameplay 
Um, we'll go back and then we'll sort of replace our white boxing with the final details and we'll add the details into the level. We'll refine things, we'll remove stuff, remove features, add maybe more features, depending on what we sort of decide with, um, to come up with the final result. Anyways, um, but right now we're still all doing white boxing and the last item for white boxing is space and maneuverability. So how, when uh, the player moves around, moves in level, how should they move? Yeah, how should move? So, cover, open space, maybe linear, multi-directional. So these are all various aspects that will pretty much actually go into the overall level design. Um, into the other two categories pretty much will <clears throat> be I guess the judge of other two aspects of level design all right so yes yeah, so with that in mind I would suggest starting with this first start with this because this will tell you this will allow you to sort of shape the way players will play the game overall we'll play game overall if you can design the space and the maneuverability of the level the way that you want it then the features and the overall size of the level will then start to take shape over time with the features, you will start to add features to sort of enhance or sort of uh, refine the methods which the players are going to use the space and the maneuver maneuverability in the level. Uh, and furthermore, uh, you're, the size is going to eventually um, show up as <clears throat> the more open level the probably the bigger it will be or if it's more closed in then it's probably gonna be smaller but then if maybe you have a closed in level but with a lot of space you could actually fit in a lot more players in a lot less space so <clears throat> the um, size is definitely less dependent but um, still uh, will be judged definitely based off of um, the overall space of the level. So with that in mind, um, let's go over sort of how we're gonna, well actually no, let's go over sort of the design principles in uh, this old game. Yes, this is uh, the first sort of project, still actually work in progress, but um, it is a maze game called Amazing. Let me see if I can play. Ooh, it does work. Wow. And this game, it has a very big emphasis on the overall design of the levels. So, right from the start, um, yeah, the top up there, that's uh, just sort of a visual glitch. I'm not entirely sure when it happens, but um, as you can see, I have designed this level with a lot of open space in mind. So... This is the this is an, um, like the main menu sort of tutorial level, not necessarily a tutorial. Uh, there's a like proper tutorial currently in the game, but um, this pretty much is a um, what I want this to be is sort of an open world um, in the very first thing that you see to get an idea of the environment. Uh, oh shoot, I'm not. Oops, <laughs> not actually showing the game. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, now you can see it. There we go. Yeah, so, yeah, I was talking about the visual glitch up there, if you look at the top there. Um, but anyways, this is to give a sort of idea of the theme, the setting, the environment of the overall game before you actually start with any gameplay. Um, there's also access to the playground that I could use in the future if I want to maybe incorporate some interesting features, some like little Easter eggs and stuff. Um, like for instance here, um, I have all these achievements set up. 
So uh, one of the sort of features of this game, um, again going back to the features, uh, this is more of a feature of the overall game design, but there are collectibles throughout each level uh, that you can collect, and uh, upon collecting them, uh, you'll be able to see a sort of representation of the collectible itself over here on the uh, main menu level, that's what this is called. Um, another feature design of level are these ammo balls, and they can shoot them. You'll see um, in the like tutorial level uh, why exactly there is like ammo that you can pick up. Um, but then some of the other features of this main menu level are the trophies. So you can complete various tasks here, complete level with long uh, jumping, shoot out around the floating cubes, like so these things that are floating around here. Um, and what else we got? Uh, yeah, that has to do with level 3, um, just the design of level 3. Level 3 was designed specifically as a sort of circular maze. Uh, this is a maze game, it's called Amazing, so um, that sort of gives you the impression of what the sort of gameplay is. Um, so yeah, uh, with the design of the maze, I can pretty much make, say, a big maze or a small maze. I can make something that feels more claustrophobic or something that feels more open um, area, I guess. Uh, and I can use this to the advantage in this game to sort of progress the world. So this is um, an intentional design. I haven't actually done too much on it. But, uh, and you hear my really bad sound check, we'll just ignore that and keep listening to the synth music. Um, but anyways, you just walk through one of these and here we go. Wow, it still works. All right. Oh yeah, that's right. I was uh, actually reworking this level. I'm coming up with a different sort of, um, theme for the level. Still going with, uh, sort of a progression and open space style layout. Um, but trying to sort of refine the overall theme of the level. So anyways, this is the first level of the game. It looks, um, oh, that's not supposed to happen. Okay, we'll just stop there. And I'll just open it up itself. All right, here we go. I'm not sure why we went through the floor there, but this is the design of the game. Um, the first level, that is. So as you can see, it is a maze. And as you can see, the glow is really bright. That's a... Uh, issue with Unreal Engine. Let me go into, let's go with, um, there you go. Okay, that's better. There we go. Now, <clears throat> this is the design of the game, the design of the first level. So, down here, what I intended for is a sort of mysterious opening, I guess. Still plenty of space to look around, um, but there's a focus more on the layout of the graphics and the floor, as you saw earlier. Um, trying to sort of emphasize that even more. Um, of course, this game isn't really in active development, um, but definitely something in the future that I do want to uh, go back and pursue. But anyways, um, the biggest feature of this level is that being a maze game, you can jump, and you can just jump over all these walls pretty much. So this isn't designed to be difficult, and it's not difficult at all to complete. That's why, actually, previously, you saw an achievement where you can complete it without jumping, because while you can jump over it, you can still also complete it like a normal maze. The elements of the features of the level involve, um, other than like the maze walls themselves, these ammo pickups that um, you saw, as well as um, these little markers. So the ammo pickups, you can pick them up and then you can shoot them. And they can shoot them at these glowing objects. So this one is a red wall. Um, red just in a case that is destructible. We'll sort of talk about, um, I guess, that would be user experience um, and uh, artistic design. Um, going over into sort of how to color the various objects in like the level, for instance. So <clears throat> um, the red and white glowing wall is just very clearly obvious. Um, and as you play, you're going to be experiencing different colored walls. Um, and by design, you come to realize that the red is the walls that gets destroyed. So when the player walks into the ball, this prompt changes to like to shoot through the wall. The wall gets shot, and then the path gets cleared to this sort of exit right here. So the level exit portal 
then continues on to the continues you on to the next level. So in terms of the placing, the level space is still fairly open. Um, again, that is to introduce a player um, in a more calming way, uh, less stressful, less closed in way into the game and the gameplay and the game feel. These balls have been placed um, very clearly in, out in the open. Um, not really with too much consideration as to the positioning that they are placed in. Um, is this going to play? Hold on. Play. Shuffle. Okay. Um, loop that too. Okay. All right. I don't know why that wasn't looping. Anyway, so yeah, the ammo placements on this level weren't placed with um, careful consideration in mind, but um, that's just because the level isn't doesn't necessarily have to rely on them. So simple and straightforward. One other thing is where the hidden trophies is just down here. So these are just the sort of optional collectibles for players who are all curious. Uh, one thing in particular about this, uh, I guess it kind of irrelevant now, but there's a spotlight above where the trophy is so that you can probably see better when you're up here and you're looking down. It could be a bit difficult to see. So um, that's one of the things that you have to consider with um, larger levels is how are you going to direct the player focus in terms of certain to certain ways because with a large level there's a lot to look at and it could be fairly easy to miss an item like a hidden trophy like that so one way to do that one common way actually to do that is with light design but that's going to be more in the details of the level you won't be focusing on creating the lighting setup of our levels at least not quite yet anyways so that's the first level of the game. I'm gonna I'm just gonna say that real quick. All right, and then open up the second level. Um, it's a bit different now. So the second levels, once it opens up, the second level is um, a more proper level in the game. So you went through the tutorial. Now here is your first challenge. So oh boy, oh boy, it's lagging. Okay, so this is the level here. There you go. Ignore the. Oh my god. Are we good? Okay. Oh boy, that's sloggy. Go back to okay, there we go. No, that's still lagging. What the heck? I don't know what's going on. Could be the skybox or something. Anyways, this is the second level. So it is a proper maze. We're gonna have to go with the uh, top view here. Here we go, that'll work out. Alright. So, oh boy. Hide that landscape. There we go, okay. So this is the level layout, pretty much. You start here, pretty much. And you have a maze here. It's a relatively small maze, because this is only the second level, but it is still a proper maze. There's a little secret here, shortcut right here. Um, not too super hidden. Um, so it's probably, but still, uh, sort of cleverly positioned so it can be missable. And it's also smaller space, so it's uh, less noticeable, less attention. Anyways, um, what you are supposed to do in this level, um, really it's like the only way to solve it, is you pick up this ammo right here, and you also pick up this one, and then you have to shoot through these two walls. Those are both red walls. If, say, you pick up this ammo and then you shoot this wall first, then you'll be, you, it'll be pretty clear that then you have a second wall, so maybe you have to go back through the maze to find something. The other thing that we have here, right here, is a marker. So this is um, to actually assist the player with um, keeping track of where they are in the maze, pretty much. When you pick up the marker, um, you can then pretty much right-click to place it back down right where you currently are. 
Um, and then each of the markers throughout the level are going to be color coded. So that, um, let's say that's like the yellow marker right there. You pick that one up. Then you're in a spot. Let's say you walk through, walk there. Um, and then you walk in up here in this little intersection. You can place it right here. And then that will give you an indication that you've already gone through that um, area. So the markers are a game design sort of feature that I would still probably work on to improve over time. Um, these sort of cubes and stuff, the floating cubes, um, are more part of the environmental design than the actual level itself, so uh, I'm not necessarily going to be talking about them um, for this sort of demonstration. So anyways, after you pick up those two, uh, oh boy, what's that little thing? Oh, that's a camera, huh? Um, yeah, that's for, uh, for like getting captures, cube maps and stuff. Um, anyway, so then you run into more maze, so then there's like a second part pretty much. The mazes are more or less designed to two or three parts um, throughout the pretty much the game, at least the levels that I've made so far. So then this second part, you are once again, there are two walls to d destroy and there are two ammos to find. So same thing as before, so um, a sense of repetition after we establish um, how to do something in terms of game design. We then sort of want to repeat that and to get the player to know well how to use it or we can maybe alter it a little bit. Um, to alter it so that the player can sort of uh, adapt and change the way that they are doing things. And that's sort of what the third level is. No, not quite. The third level is still, <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Third level is still a maze. And again, this game isn't finished or anything. So um, it can, certainly we can change and evolve. There can be better, like better mechanics and whatnot. Um, but the third level here, there we go. Oh boy, that's unlit. There we go. Third level, all rainy. Um, the weather pr is progressing throughout the levels, which is something that um, should be clear and is part of the overall um, game design. But that's again all part of the white box. Um, so what I did with this is I created a variation pretty much of the typical maze and went with a circular maze instead. Um, so a different sort of thinking Dif way th th different way of thinking of how to solve the maze and how to navigate through the maze but with the same gameplay features the same mechanics the same level features as before you still have red destructible walls you still have ammo pickups and you still have game markers in this level you also still have the trophies and they're still um, carefully placed around in little secret hidden spots uh, that aren't too hidden if the player uh, pretty much watches out carefully for them. So nothing too involved with that. Then we go into level four and the first thing we're going to notice is a new type of wall. Once it loads that is. So I'm just going to have to wait for this. Level four, all right, so the textures aren't loading quite yet. We'll wait again. You know, uh, the Synthwave track, uh, it's kind of nice. It reminds me of uh, the Stellaris soundtrack. Um, though I would say that Stellaris, honestly, their soundtrack, it does get kind of uh, annoying and repetitive at times. Um, so yeah, good job, Steve. Uh, <laughs> all right, so anyways, our next type of wall here, there we go. Oh, is this, uh, let me see. This is an undestructible wall. Let's edit the blueprint real quick. I wanna check something here. So, mm, there we go. All right, explosion. Uh, defaults. 
undestructible wall, unbreakable wall component. That's what I want to look at. Um, here we go. What materials are used? Ghost cube, cube, unbreakable. Okay, so the unbreakable texture, I thought it was green. It probably should be green. Um, it's taking a while to open, but what I can tell you is that it is glowing still. So the fact that it's glowing should indicate to players that it is, once again, a wall. Something that blocks your path pretty much. The unbreakable wall, however, can't get shot out to get destroyed. There is a different way instead. If this window will open, I'm getting really irritated by Unreal Engine right now. All right, um, you know, our laser tag, uh, we're gonna just close out of that for now. That should help out a little bit. Come on, load. Aha, we loaded, finally. Well, you know, okay. So yeah, that's what I wanted to show. The glowing black and white texture. So that um, isn't necessarily easy to see, as you can see. It just looks like some bright glowing light. So um, there's a chance I might revise it. But what something that you can obviously see, however, is the green glow. So I'm going to play this level. Hopefully it actually plays. Um, but there we go. So anyways, the first thing you see, apart from the giant glowing wall, is this little thing here. Um, and then there's uh, some sort of pipe there. And I just seem to have just hopped off of a cube. Oh, look, there's an ammo right here. huh? All right, so I can shoot the wall. And as you can see, as I told you before, it um, doesn't get shot. I can try shooting this and... Uh, it's kind of glitched out right now, but what um, you're doing actually is you are holding the cube uh, essentially in front of you. And you can place it on that, and then the wall opens up to a nice sunset view. And then you are greeted directly by this all too friendly red wall. So yeah, that's sort of um, how I went about with introducing a new feature into the level design as you go on. And then right here is another block wall. Here is a yellow pipe like before. And then you have a green platform over here. So if you go and uh, find that, you can sort of make the connection that it's the same yellow pipe that destroys the wall over there. Um, so the intention is to pretty much go and try and find out how you're going to do that. So what do you have? Well over here you have a sphere pretty much that can be rolled into this little trigger here that destroys this wall and then you have access to this ammo. You can break that ammo down then you navigate here there's more ammo and so on and so forth. Uh, but something in particular about this level um, that is different from the other levels are the much higher walls. So this level is designed where the walls are much higher than before. So as the levels progress, the walls get taller. So it sort of adds on to the sense of the challenge in this level and also the overall feel of the level. So progressing um, how the level uh, pretty much plays out passively and also actively. Um, something else are that the quarters are tighter as well. So um, that means that there's more of a maze to pack in. Well, okay, they're not all necessarily tighter. Um, some of them are, though. There's more maze, more navigation, more of a challenge to try to figure out and solve um, in this level. Um, and as you go on, here we go. Ah, uh, yes, you have this 
sort of area here. How did I do this? Let's see here. So, okay, this is a green switch. So the switches, by the way, are um, shape-coded pretty much. One of the switches, I believe, disables the floor or something. Uh, I forgot. I made this level a while ago. Um, but there's like there's some sort of little tricky challenge here that um, a little mind puzzle that to solve, and then once you get here, then you get to level. So this level is divided. Okay, maybe it's a little too big. I could probably make this level smaller. Why? Because if you look at the level design, it's divided into quite a few different sections. So you have this stars section here where you learn about the new wall. Then you have this section roughly around here. So here, yeah, this is a little tight maze area where you can go and find uh, like an ammo or something um, to destroy. Oh no, first off you then go into here. So you then do that thing, get that, and then you, have, you can probably explore this sort of area here. Uh, that's one area. This is another area of little exploration and whatnot. <clears throat> this is another area, again, and then this area splits off into multiple areas as well. So this is overall a much a larger map, and I think it probably is confusing to get lost in. So um, something that I would definitely go through to revise. Um, and then you also have this little bonus area as well. So typically things are made into three parts because they have a beginning middle and end um, with the beginning middle and end it's easy to track and pace the um, gameplay or the experience and story or whatnot um, that's why things are made in such a structure with a beginning middle and end. and this level has way too much of a middle pretty much anyways and then I'll just go over one more level and then we'll go back to um, the game that we've been working on. Okay, or I can just, you know, close out of Unreal Engine, honestly, because the interface isn't loading. Alright, you know, I'll just tell you about what the next level is. So the next level um, is a level designed more around the landscape, so an alternate design to the block level layout um, to create some more variation. Um, the this level also introduces a new type of uh, wall pretty much it is a I guess a placeable wall or creatable wall something like that but what it pretty much does is it uses the triggers that you are introduced to in this level it reuses them in a new way so rather than destroying a wall it creates a wall which actually can be used like as a platform to get across um, something so anyways, uh, Unreal Engine, yeah, not responding, end task. All right, there we go. And then let's open back up, let's update this. All right. Let's go back actually to here. So anyways, yeah, with that level, then um, I'm actually introducing multiple mechanics in that level. So with this game amazing, the design of it is that the first three levels are basic and they introduce you to the game to how the basic game play works out um, <clears throat> you can get to know the mechanics very well pretty much then level four and onwards start to introduce new stuff so you take those basic gameplay mechanics and then you incorporate them into something new um, new that you haven't experienced before but with what you have experienced before, you can adapt and continue on pretty much. So as the levels design, they will change in variety, they'll change in style and size. Uh, they'll be more challenging sometimes to solve the puzzles. Um, other times they'll be introducing new concepts up until the final level, which then will be a sort of accumulation of all that you've come to learn so that would be the sort of level design 
to go about with a single player game, but we are doing multiplayer. So with multiplayer, it's less about the overall progression of level and more about the level itself. So what in the level itself do you have? What do, can a player take advantage of? What can a player use within the level to sort of go out? So I'm going to start off with a sort of familiar layout for our, uh, the overall level plan. So I'm going to start with a little map here. Let's see here. So let's do like a little box here. Let's do some walls here. Okay. Um, no, I don't like that. Let me, here we go. Something like that. Then we can do like that and that and that and that. Let's see here. Maybe something like that. Um, over here, these side walls. Why did it erase all that? Okay, whatever. Um, there you go. Do that. Do that. Ooh, boom. All right, something like that. All right, so what I'm pretty much doing here is I'm recreating Pac-Man. I'll be honest with you. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to just quickly search uh, Pac-Man. There we go. Not the Google Doodle. The original layout. There we go. Uh, oh, well, I was really bad at that. Um, okay, so here's the layout of uh, Pac-Man, pretty much. Now, why do I point this out? Well, there's... Um, I think Pac-Man would work out kind of well as a multiplayer map. Um, of course, Pac-Man has been attempted to be a multiplayer game in the past, um, and unsuccessfully for various reasons, which I won't go over in this live stream, but... Um, what to point out about this is the overall layout of Pac-Man. Of course, it is a fairly old game, but it is also a fairly simple layout. So Pac-Man can go up, down, let's see here, uh, up, down, uh, left, and right, pretty much. And the game is designed with that sort of movement in mind. So you can pretty much divide this game into a grid and then you can create the level out. In fact, that is how like the original Pac-Man was made. Um, you can look at various videos like online and whatnot um, for how uh, Pac-Man internally worked. Um, but pretty much it does actually divide the grid, divide the game uh, map into grid elements. So you have like, let's say this corner piece here, uh, it's a texture that gets placed first and then this one and then this one this one so on so on so on and it prints out pretty much the entire screen as uh, an entire grid so the ready text is even like part of the grid so if you let's look here carefully actually um i open a new tab there we go we can zoom in here this is uh i think a fan recreation pac-man anyways um, so it doesn't really count that much, but uh, it will do for our purposes. So let's look here. If I divide this here, I think we get a rough idea of the grid layout. So one dot per grid cell. So I can divide. So the ghosts seem to take up two grid cells pretty much. Yeah, the ghosts take up um, two grid cells, and of course they don't move exactly grid by grid, but the dots placement and also like say this bottom text here, the walls, all fit aligned with this grid. So, why do I mention that? Because that is, well, that actually is essentially just a white box, but um, more specifically, that's sort of how we're going to go about with white boxing pretty much. We're going to set up a grid of sorts. So we have a grid here already. So let's erase that Pac-Man layout. All right. So let's start, let's zoom out here to give us a little more space. There we go. All right, so the first thing that we should establish is our player size. So let's say that this is our player unit one square size 
in size. All right, so the player can move around in that much space. So if we have like a wall here, the player can move back and forth within this little area. So with that in mind, we need to start off with say player starts. So let's assume that this is our first Temlo map is going to be like a team map. So we're going to go with multiple teams. So let's have a few player starts. I'm going to go with, let's go with drawing color. Here we go. Start with a red and a blue team say. So let's start with, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Four, this is six players. I think that could be interesting. Six players. All right. Now, we started with half of the map. So we're gonna make a symmetrical map. If the mouse can, there we go, okay. So we're gonna make it symmetrical. Symmetrical means it's even, balanced, fair on both sides, pretty much. There we go, I totally misspelled balance there. There we go, all right. So I'm going to select these. I'm going to move them down a little bit so I have more space. I'm going to move them over two. There we go. All right. So let's begin. When you're playing, let's say you're this player right here, or you're spotting that spot. Let's say that that's your viewport. No, let's not say that that's your viewport. Let's say this is the viewport size. That's another thing that you want to establish is how does the size of the level look to the player. I'm gonna put that down real quick on these notes I will eventually share, don't worry about that. Um, player size, uh, level scale relative to camera important. So this is important for perception of level. So sort of the same idea of when you have um, FOV, you increase it, increase equals more uh, speed. It doesn't actually increase your speed, but it makes it look like that you're moving faster. That's because of the overall scale of the level. All right, so let's um, take this blue here. Actually, let's take this uh, crazy red here and we'll mark out what our rough player window will be so yeah I think that looks good and then we have like the controls here all right here we go so with that in mind I think that's good so let's go with something let's go with something um let's leave so let's have all the players spawn in the back here so this will be our back wall but we'll leave some room up here and down here for um Let's say a little bit of maneuverability or maybe we want to move the spawns up pretty much somewhere. So I think we want to, let's leave this sort of back area um, empty here. So the players can move up and down and sort of change how they go about with the level. Undo that. We don't want to erase those. For some reason this eraser is activating by its own pretty much. So let's create our upper wall boundaries as well all right there we go it's a rough sketch um, it's not super precise but once we put it into the engine then we'll start refining the scale details all right so let's have a sort of I'm gonna let's have let's add a pen here here we go we'll add this this rainbow here there you go. Happy Pride Month. Um, there you go. Let's make some general exit paths that we want players to be able to leave. So I want something up there and down here. All right. Something middle. This isn't a MOBA. I know that MOBAs have like a top center and bottom lane. That's what we just sort of made. Um, but I don't necessarily want that. Exactly. So I'm going to make, uh, let's go with five levels and we have six spawns actually no let's remove this middle and exit here oops i just erased that again 
All right, there we go. Okay, so there, move there. All right. So then, when the players walk out here, I want this sort of top and bottom area to be fairly accessible, but I want this middle area to split off into different paths. So. The reason for this is I want the players to pretty much be navigating this as a sort of maze. If they get to know the layout well, then they can they take that to their advantage. But if they're not, then in general, they will know to move in. Let me go on this. Here we go. So the red players are generally going to be inclined to move into that direction. So that's what I want. Uh, designed to be so if there's like a if you have to take a back turn somewhere I want to make sure that that back turn then is routed back into the same direction that the players will be going so they're incentivized to go towards the enemy team because this is a multiplayer game I want the players to be uh, I want some players to interact in a sort of a multiplayer way so they're gonna be they're gonna be facing the team by design all right so let's see here Let's have right about here. There's another little passage, top and bottom, in case they want to, you know, sort of switch paths or something. Okay, and then from here, let's say they can also go up and down there. All right, let's go with something like that. Actually, yeah. So what this is is have a we're gonna have like a wall here pretty much so let's have make us start making a little wall here so start off there all right all right all right there we go we have our first uh walls in level more or less um again it's not super precise and i think in terms of the scale uh we're definitely leaving a lot of room um but actually no i don't think i don't think it's too bad so Here we go. What about something like that? Hmm. That could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Let's see here. Let's have another thing there. Another thing there. All right. We'll have something along there. And then we'll smear it over here. There we go. Okay. Hmm. All right. All right. Interesting. So I like I like um, sort of the concept of this here. Can't really see the red highlighter, a, a yellow highlighter. Let's, I think the green's better. Nope, the green's no better. Okay. Uh, purple. Purple is literally invisible. Uh, great. White. You're kidding me. The white highlighter is not visible. Okay. Black. Uh, dark theme. Okay. Um, what's the point even? What's the point even of having highlighters if you can't see them? You kind of see that one. Okay. Um, just add another pen, I guess. Uh, make it this color. Here. All right, there you go. There's our highlighter, sort of. All right. So I like this sort of um, concept here. So I think this is this would be good as a sort of um, choke point um, or like a secret hiding spot or something like that. Um, furthermore, I want to give yeah, I want to give uh, players more maneuverability around here. As you can see, they can go up there, can go like there, and like there. They can go through there. It's in the middle. And then once they're more in the middle, then it's gonna be a little bit tight, but not not uh, not super tight. So let's see here. I'm thinking, um, yeah, okay. We'll force the players down this way. So if you're here, you're gonna go down here, get closer in to the middle here. All right. And then 
Let's see here. So actually, let's extend this over. There we go. All right, all right. So we're going to mirror that up here as well. Why did that draw a line instead? Okay, that was weird. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Here we have something like that. And then we have that right there. So just to make sure that's not super confusing, I'm gonna fill in the areas where like the players can't roam in. There we go. Alright. Here we go. Okay, so this gives a lot of different options as to how to like enter this. So the way I'm seeing this so far is being symmetrical. You have, we have, let's see here. We have this area here. We have this one here. We have this one here, this one here, and then this one here. All right. So that's our so-called lanes, I guess. Um, in terms of like an MMO speak. So right around here, you have these two lanes going back and forth. So with that in mind, this top lane area, we're going to extend this up a little bit more. Just to sort of isolate them. Meanwhile, these three... We're actually going to uh, leave this area open. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to leave it open. We're going to leave it open, and then we're going to divide it. Let's actually modify it. We're not going to leave it open. I'm going to go add some little areas for cover. All right, so think about when the players are sort of navigating this. I think we could do a better job with um, giving some a little bit better um, hiding spots. So let's see here. Something like that. Uh, just hold on. Okay, that's what we have. Something like that, 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 and we'll do that. All right. Ooh, yeah, I like that. All right, so a little modification from what I had down here. Let me just erase that bottom wall. All right, so. Go with this sort of l shape design. So go up here, and then we'll go here, and then we'll go up here. There we go, something like that. And this wall here goes extends down there. Yeah, all right. So this creates some little interesting areas right around here. So again, same thing there. Um, that's actually a sort of common design. We could uh, utilize that some interesting ways, but also then there are the paths so that you can go around here. So that could create some that's that could create some uh, very interesting sort of uh, plays, I guess. All right, and then I think, hmm, yeah, all right. So I think with this actually, I think we're at a good spot. Um, to mirror the map for the other side.
Let's, uh, let's have the center wall here. So this is like a dividing wall, but we'll make sure that there's quite a bit of room here. There we go. Okay. Um, so the way that this is designed right now, you have a lot of different paths, but then they all sort of collect right there. So let's have, let's actually divide into two different areas so general areas that can be grouped up so let's see here let's have wall wall okay then a wall there all right something like that and then mirrored on the other side And then, all right, let's see about this. Let's attach these from the edge walls here. Hmm. I think I'm going to actually move this back. Ooh, yeah, I like that. All right. There we go. And then that would be our sort of halfway point. So I think I think this actually could uh, be a good starting point. We can see sort of a uh, white box of this out. And then um, once we are later on into more game design and testing, we can see how it plays out. Um, particularly against pro possibly AI as well as maybe even other players. So with this sort of design, um, some sort of design elements I want to focus on. Let's see here. Players, start off back here. You can go back and forth back here. So let me white box in all the walls here. There we go. All right, all right, all right. There we go. All right. All right. There we go. All right. There we go. There we go. I keep saying there we go. Um, <clears throat> okay. So the players start off here. They have one, two, three, four different areas that they could then move out to. So this is designed for six players, pretty much. So once they go into this area, they can continue on with this path if they're from up here, or they can move down to here. Same thing on this side as well, because we're uh, making a symmetric map here. And then if you are in here, then you're pretty much forced to go through the middle. So in this next area, uh, we have one, two, three, four, five areas to go through actually. So this area you can go through here. And then once you're around here, you get to more or less the middle of the map. So to get to this region right here, you have one, two, you only have three areas here. So those who are in the middle, then they'll go up to here. So they can go up that way. They can go once again through the middle. They can go straight on or they can go and turn as well. Then things get really interesting here. So this back area right here, yeah, that pretty much just goes all the way up there once you get past this initial thing. Uh, you can probably go here. We'll see we'll see what the that might offer. That could be a sort of interesting to play around with. Anyways, right here, so I'm going to mark the middle of the map here. So this is a this is this point of symmetry. I didn't change it. Pen, darn it. Okay. Point of symmetry right there. <clears throat> so this is sort of where the uh, other team is going to sort of meet up. So once you're here, you can go that way. You can go that way. You can go down here, same thing. There, boom, right up there, right up there. All right, these guys meet up with there. You can also go across here. 
and I can engage the enemy in three different general areas. So these are going to be very, uh, very uh, spacious areas with quite a lot of room to maneuver around, quite a lot of room to uh, get around, and maybe we'll uh, put some more uh, various obstacles and stuff right in the middle to um, keep things interesting. And then players can then either fall back into the sort of maze and uh, hide or outmaneuver their opponents or whatnot. <coughs> um, yeah, I think this is good for uh, starting off. And then I think, uh, I don't think this is going to be final though at all really. Um, I think there's probably going to be more that we can do around the outside here and over here. Um, so we have, I think we definitely have room to expand um, as uh, possibly needed. All right, so I think, but I think this is good for um, white boxing. I think um, we can probably get quite a bit of progress done with regards to white boxing um, for the remainder of the live stream. So I'm going to make that smaller. I'm going to put it over here in the corner here. OBS, why? Why? Why are you doing this? Yeah, this is live. Oh my god. Why is OBS doing this? Okay. Why is it? Why is the. Okay, whatever. <clears throat> I think that'll work out for, uh, for what we're trying to accomplish, so. There we go. All right, so let's um, get started. So we'll go back to our test map. And we'll just sort of uh, build off of this. I'm going to go and click this little button right up here. This goes into the four uh, port viewport mode. And I'm going to just uh, pretty just delete these. Actually, no, we won't delete this testing level. Sorry. Make a new level. We'll call this um, proto type game play level something like that um we'll come up with a name later so names aren't necessarily the most important i'm going to make a new folder um call it game levels there we go capital capital um or oh actually i messed up the name scheme so game underscore levels let me check okay not quite um Let's go with camel case, Pascal case. There we go. All right. That into there. There we go. And then save everything. There we go. Check it out. All right. So prototype gameplay level. Now let's go back here. So we have the modeling tools. That's right. That's what we're going to be using. In case you're wondering how to enable the modeling tools, in case you don't see it. You just go into plugins and then where are the plugins? There they are. All right, you just search here modeling tools and modeling tools editor, editor mode blah, right there. You can enable that. You can also enable the older static mesh modeling mode, but uh, it's not as good. Um, this mode is good, however, for level design. So, uh, last live stream, we use the create a box to start off our level. I'm not actually going to do that. Or maybe, no, I won't do that. Here we go. Actually, no, I will. So we need to start off with, we need to start off with some uh, sort of ground level, pretty much. So I think with regards to this level specifically, um, I think we can probably scale it down a little bit. So I was, this was a very rough estimate of this overall size of the level. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, I think, okay. Yeah, we'll make it 30 that direction, then. Let's go with, let's go with, ooh, that's 
that's actually quite a lot. Um, we'll go with 80. So 30 by 80. Eh. Hmm. Let's go with more of 30 by 60. So, right now, what's the unit in terms of Unreal Engine? Let's check real quick. So we'll grab our base player here, and we'll just add the base player into the level. All right, here we go. Here's our base player, uh, and you can build the cube attached to the static mesh if you want. Um, but yeah, so the player is 200 by 200 in terms of the scale. So what does that mean in terms of the width? Well, 200 times 30 would be 600. So 600. If I then click all that, there we go. Uh, no, it seems kind of small. So 6,000, that's right. It was 100 times 30. Okay, 6,000. All right, yeah, that seems about right. And then our depth was, we said 80. 80 times uh, 20 will then be 1600. All right, so this should be nice and big. Yeah, okay, that's good. All right, so I'm going to place this roughly there. I'm going to use, because we're in 5.2, we have this nice little editor mode that will help us align it to be centered in the map. And also we're gonna level it down so that our ground playing field is on Z equals zero. So I'm gonna click one more thing. Let's go and let's just assign a material to this because we made a few materials last time. So map, out of bounds material. Uh, let's make a new one. Let's make a base. Matt, there we go. Just a base material. I'm gonna just make it like a basic color. So I'm gonna hold uh, V for vector parameter. I'm gonna call this color. There we go. Just drag it into the base color, and then we're gonna make it white. Click apply. Click save. All right, there we go. Now we have our base material. We can assign it right there. And then we're gonna save it into the current folder. So let's go find a the relevant folder. So meshes right here, map, we'll start with the map, test map, we'll make a new folder, um, match it with the game level map that we have. So this is prototype gameplay level. There we go, all right, go into that. And then we'll find the accept button right there. Click accept. All right, I'm gonna just call this floor. Prototype gameplay level. So this actually could be a reusable asset, um, the floor. Since a f pretty much every single floor in this game is gonna be a giant rectangle, we could put the giant rectangle somewhere else and probably save on overall storage of the game. But we're not gonna worry about that now because we're only working on one level. Let me switch over here into the lit mode so that we can see sort of how it is. Uh, yes, we don't have any light, so I'm gonna just add basic lighting into the level so that we can see it if we are in the lit mode. Go to the selection mode and then we'll add ourselves a nice directional light. Here we go, oh boy, nice and bright, uh, very bright indeed. Um, and then add skylight as well. Well, uh, we can add um, sky atmosphere, but unfortunately that doesn't work with forward shading necessarily. So we'll just stick with this for now. Here we go, rotate that. Let's see if we can get the skylight to do anything other than create dark static shadows. Um, modify the lower hemisphere. It does some stuff. It could help out a little bit, but not everything that we want it to do. So let me make this a little bit white. There we go. All right, so that helps out a little bit with the shading, but not the light itself, because 
That shadow is very, very, very harsh. Increase the intensity. I think that actually works out a little bit. Let's reset that atmosphere color. Or not, okay. Mm. Don't worry, I'll fix the lighting soon. Uh, we'll see about that. So, anyways, there's our nice little player on the giant empty map that we currently have. And actually, I think I'm going to probably scale it down a little bit. I think this is pretty big. Uh, let's see, actually, if I play it here. Uh, okay, so we need to, if we weren't going to play it, we're going to need to change our game mode here over to the main game mode. So now, okay, there we go. I have a player now, and the player can move around. So one thing I do have is I'm currently playing from the camera current camera location, so because I don't have a player start. I'm going to have a player start here real quick to make sure that we start from there instead. And then I have to switch it to default. What? Uh, okay, stop this. We'll click this here to go back into this mode. Ah, yes, yeah, so we place the player star in the middle of the air. So go back into this mode. Or drag the player start down to the bottom there. Okay, there we go. That should be better. There we go. Okay, now we got ourselves an idea of the map size. And it definitely does take a while to go from one point to another. So I think um, definitely make it smaller. So in order to do that, I'm going to select the mesh here, go to the modeling right there, um, back into our modeling mode. We're going to go into this poly ed mode or poly edit. I'm going to go into the top view and select the edges. We're going to drag them in pretty much. So to do that, there you go. You see this green line. It might be a bit difficult to see with the... Um, y-axis we're gonna drag it in nice and precise minus 1800 do the same thing for this side as well we're gonna chop it off by um, about 2000 there we go okay and then we're gonna do a little bit more I'd say on both sides here so 6,000 and we'll just put in the direct value minus 6,000. There we go. All right, I think that's that's probably should be a little bit better. So I'm gonna drag this stuff back onto our level now. And then, oh, one thing I just noticed, we sort of screwed up this upper bound for our level. So I'm gonna move this back up. There we go, except. All right, that looks good now. So we now need to make our walls here. <clears throat> so for the walls, I'm gonna do something different actually. I'm gonna go into the box mode and then we're gonna make this be, let's say, 1,000 by 1,000. And go into our materials, out of bounds material, we'll sign that. And then we'll have this be our generic level boundary block, pretty much. So I'll go into our map. No, I won't go into map. I'll go into the meshes folder test map underscore floor we're going to the map folder and make a new folder call it common okay there we go nice and precise more or less uh, can lower that a bit there we go all right 
accept and then we'll call this uh, level bounds score 1000 by 1000 so that is an indication of what the size is of the level let's check it out in our perspective view here all right so there we go there it is and all its glory um, we can probably raise it a little bit so we're gonna go into poly mode I'm gonna raise it up to let's go with uh, yeah that height that seems good um, something that's definitely taller than the player itself um, ah sorry about that okay so I'm gonna go full screen we're gonna just look there we go so we have the little preview I just wanted to check this and sort of check how it looks relative to the player and I think it's uh, good all right so yeah, I think we're gonna keep it so now the reason I made this into a single block is I'm going to hold alt and then I'm gonna move it over there we go and what that did was it just duplicated it so I'm going to actually select both of these and we're gonna put them into a folder call this uh, f2 to rename level bounds there we go make sure we're gonna keep the overall level design nice and organized pretty much um, all right so now we're gonna build the boundaries to the level so I'm gonna change this to a thousand scale so that we can do it quicker and what I'm doing is I'm shift clicking to select multiple objects and I'm holding alt and dragging them to duplicate them so then I only need four left Four more blocks left, so I'm going to do that. Okay, oh boy. There we go. Select four and drag them over. There we go. We have one side of our wall done. I'm going to drag two more at the ends there to fill in the corners, and I'm just going to drag select all of them, hold alt again, and then do the opposite side. Now we need four more for both of the sides. So select four of them. There we go. And then I'm going to press instead if you so if you press q you can go into select mode press w is translate e is rotate and r is scale so q w e and r are some of your uh, most favorite key bindings when it comes to level design t uh i don't think t does anything um all right so we're gonna go into the rotate mode we're gonna yeah we can keep it at 10 degrees because what we're going to do is hold alt again and rotate it to 90 degrees drag it up there all right and then we're going to do the same thing alt and drag the movement so i went back to movement mode dragged it over and there we go now we have our boundaries for the level so our next part is going to be we're going to create this in a modular style so the modularity is going to mean i mean we've already done it modular with these floor tiles because we've also done the floor modular but we're going to do the rest um also modular so i'm going to go back to grid size to 100 because i think that yeah that's going to work out for us we're going to create a, another box we're not going to make it a thousand by a thousand we're going to go with let's go with a uh, hundred by oh boy uh 100 there we go all right uh and then I'm going to make a new material map, mount bounce map. So we're going to take the base mat. We're going to create a material instance. So we're going to do this because we're only just going to create a variation of the base mat. So base mat underscore walls. There we go. Open that up. And then we're just going to change the color because it's the only parameter we have. Here we go. Lower that a little bit so we can see it. You see distinctly compared to the rest of the level all right here we go and we're assigning that the material that we're going to place <clears throat> and let's see here so our box is a thousand 100 by 100. oops what did i just i just saved okay uh no problem with that here we go oh boy there we go all right hmm this isn't quite the level layout that we want so that's because it's pinning to the corners only so we can do 50 
There you go. I need a 10 as well. 10 is imprecise, so. Hmm. Pivot location. We can change this. Base, centered, or top. Okay, it's not very. Not a whole lot there. All right, so. Hmm. It's actually, no, let's use this. All right, so the path tool. We're gonna be using this to draw out the level um, because I changed my mind about the modularity of this level, at least for the start. Um, actually, no, we're not gonna do that quite yet. So I'm going ahead of myself. We're gonna click escape to get out of that mode. We're gonna delete our little test subject here. And then this is our player start, so we'll create a new folder called, uh, call it, um, uh, starts, spawn points, whatever you want to call it. Um, okay, we're going to move it around here, so. I'm going to actually delete this one because I don't know what's going on with the positioning. Gonna re add it. There we go. Okay, that's better. So, quick check. Right start. Oh my god. So, when you're using this four port viewport mode, you have to make sure that you also place things correctly in every single dimension. And it looks like that will work out. For our player start, but I think I'm gonna lift it up a little bit. There we go. Alright, so with this in mind, I think one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six units, um, or rather 600 units, will be sort of the lane width of the back area. Alright, so then I'll copy this over six times for. Actually, I'm going to copy it over three times. Then position each of these three spawns roughly in the same distance of each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's good. All right. So select the three spawns and I'll drag them to the other side. Once again, align them up so that they're even. These two are close together, but I think there's going to be enough space for the players to go around. And then I just realized I actually have a lot more room than I initially thought of, so... Not quite there. Oh boy, I just selected the floor. Okay. Careful when you drag select. Alright. Going to move that player up there. Move this player... Yeah, right about there. Okay. And then one... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll actually make it six. Just make things a little bit more even. There we go. All right. I'll drag that up. And then one, two, three, four spaces from the x axis. So one, two, three, four. Is that four? One, two, three, four. Nope. That's one extra. There we go. All right. All right. That looks, that looks, yeah, that looks pretty good. So we have our six spawns set up on one half of the playing field. So now we'll just move over progressively, making the layout that we originally made. Uh, we'll probably have to adjust some of the walls and features a little bit as we go along. But now we're going to go back into the modeling mode. We're going to go into the poly X mode. We're going to draw and make our uh, first wall. So what do we have here? We got a little back passage. So let's, uh, so we went with three, four, five, six. There we go. All right. So start off with this little back passage area here. Um, Let's see here. So, okay, let me go back into, hold on. 
Let's go back into this right here. There we go. All right. So I'm going to how I'm going to divide the map into sections to help out with the sort of overall size. So we already have our halfway point right there. All right. There we go. There's our halfway. Now, then I can divide the halfway in half. All right. There we go. That's halfway in half. And then I can divide it into a third or roughly a third. So this is about be a third. All right. There we go. No, I don't want to open up Rising Master. Um, <clears throat> so that's about a third. All right. And then we're going to buy the thirds into sixths. And then from there, as you can see, comes roughly the map layout. So with this in mind, um, how I was talking about in the project I was showing off before, how there are, it was divided into separate sections, like three or so sections, one, two, three sections, four sections, five sections, whatnot. This map layout that we have, half of it will divide nice and neatly into six different parts. Uh, we're going to remove this quarter line because I don't think that really helps out too much. Um, that's not the quarter line though. So there's one, there's one. That was a third line actually. So we'll delete that one. There you go. Oops, I just deleted a little too much. Ah. Okay, there we go. We got it. Okay. So we'll keep this um, just in mind with regarding to how the overall map's going to end up. All right, minimize that again. So with that in mind, we have six. So roughly, how are we going to divide this into six? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, actually, that's quite easy. So luckily, we made this um, exactly 6,000 units in length. So we can definitely use that as a good approximation as to where to start positioning our um, map assets. All right. Now, back to the PolyX tool. Um, oh yeah, one more thing. I guess we can uh, do the division on the uh, other axis too. So uh, the way I designed this is definitely going to be divided halfway. And then I think quarters probably, yeah, quarters would work best for this. All right, so there we go. We have a rough grid. So with that in mind, quarters. So luckily that's four by six. Wow. All right, sorry about that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so. Sorry, in sixths. So with that in mind, we will get started. Let's see here. So we have uh, three, four, five, six. I don't exactly want to position it there, but we definitely want to leave enough room along the edge. All right, and then along this side, we go three. So one, two, three. Yeah, all right, I think that works well. And then we'll just uh, keep it divided up by the quadrants for now. So there we go, we have officially placed our first wall for white boxing the map out. Um, I'm actually going to undo that, so, oh boy. Undo, undo, you just press uh, Control Z. I'm going to do this bottom wall first, actually. I'm going to lower it all the way down to the edge there. Sort of like how um, we have in the map layout, if you can see it on the corner there. And then I'm going to create, oh yeah, I think that's that'll probably work out well. No, I think, I think we're gonna go with thin walls like that, yeah. So thin walls are going to help out a lot with um, 
maneuverability. So I pretty much click the wall layout I want, and then on the last layout, I now have to give uh, the size of the wall. So I'm going to go into perspective mode here, and I'm just going to use the reference back wall here. There we go, and then we're going to go find out. There we go, map. You know, prototype game level, floor prototype. We're going to go with. Um, so give it a good, relatively descriptive name. Um, U wall. Because it's shaped as a wall. Um, underscore. Let's go with. Corner because it's relatively on the corner of the map, and then we'll go with a map name. So prototype gameplay level. Click save. There we go, and we have placed the wall. Um, one thing I'm actually going to do, I'm going to click complete, and I'm going to go poly edit, edit mode. I'm going to select the top of the wall. And I'm actually going to lower it because I want the outer walls to be lower than. I mean, to be taller than the inner walls. Click accept, and actually, I'm going to modify these. So, I'm going to modify this one, drag it up like that, click accept, and as you saw, it made all the other ones uh, taller. All the other uh, instances, that is. So, there we go. We have our first wall. Now, then this wall here, we're going to be pretty much reusing this so I'm going to press Q to go into select mode and select this and go to back to W going to duplicate it there we go duplicate mirror onto that side and then select these we're going to put these into a folder as well rename it uh, to walls there we go and then our player starts we need to go into the start folder there we go keep things nice and organized level bounds we can hide that and then we select the walls to make sure we, um, hopefully at least, start placing stuff inside the walls. All right, let's see how this actually is. So if I go around here, there we go. Oh yeah, I think, yeah, that works out uh, pretty decently. Not super tight in terms of uh, maneuverability room, but um, it works out, yeah, it works out pretty well, I think. All right, so then um, we're going to go back in, and then we're going to go start making the next wall. We're going to go with the sort of middle wall, so it's a T-shaped wall. And go with another three-way, so one, two, three. There we go. Same thing over here, one, two, three. All right. And then in terms of the layout that we have planned, so... It's not quite to scale, um, and I think I'm going to take a little bit of liberty and sort of modify it. So I'm going to make this uh, stick with the one by one walls, except for the middle. Actually, no. So undo that. I'm going to make it too wide because it's going to go through the middle. We're going to make it uh, too wide through the middle. All right. So I'm going to have it go all the way up to about here, so like about halfway, a little bit less. Here we go. All right, and then we're gonna have it match up with the current wall here. We're gonna save it into the appropriate spot. So map right here, prototype gameplay level. Call it uh, T wall underscore back underscore gameplay level prototype. So there we go. Now we have our T-shaped wall in the back over here. And then we're going to go on and continue on with the rest of the wall layouts. So the next part, we're going to be starting working in the next uh, sixth quadrant. We have pretty much a sort of wall shape that goes right there. And that goes sort of, sort of blocking this area. And then it goes down here, and then it goes over here. A little sort of U-shape up there, then that way, and that way. Okay, so I'm going to actually divide the next sort of section into a few multiple walls, just to sort of keep it 
um, relatively organized. So we have this wall right up here. I'm going to go to roughly, actually I'm going to go to exactly that distance that we used before. And then we'll start the next wall right about here. Okay, I'm going to go up to, let's see here. Hmm, I'm thinking. Yeah, let's go with this. All right. There we go. So this is a little bit different from the initial design of the layout. Uh, hmm. It's actually going to be, I uh, don't know, let's undo this. I'm going to go with actually the top wall area first. So... Let's see here. Let's go to... Oh, there, yeah, okay, we'll make this a two thickness wall. It's a little area here, a little bit bigger, and then drag it up and make the passageway up here a little bit more narrow. Actually, no, don't make it more narrow. There we go. All right, and then, yeah, we'll stop it there for this. Sort of get the outside of the wall in. All right. Bit more of a complicated wall there. And I can turn meshes, our map folder, our outside gameplay level right there. Uh, So I don't exactly know what sort of shape that is. I guess I'm not entirely sure. Um, so I'll just call it wall two, wall three. Yeah, wall three, because it's the third wall. Um, I'm gonna score back mid. I'm gonna score gameplay level. Oops, it's not gameplay level prototype. It's underscore prototype gameplay level. Okay. Click complete and then we're going to mirror it over. Um, we don't actually have to mirror it over. So, but what I'm going to do, because we want to match this sort of layout but mirrored, I'm going to go to our details pane here. Mirror it over the y-axis by negative one. I'll flip the mid object and then uh, unfortunately it's not exactly aligned. Uh, okay. Luckily though there's a simple solution. That probably won't work. No, actually it did work. Okay, good. There we go. So we just pretty much mirror it over and then we flip the scale to make sure that it um, is mirrored on the other side appropriately. Um, one thing with a lit mode that we're going to probably have to account for is the fact that this back corridor here without the lighting is extremely dark. We don't want that. Um, hmm, one thing I could do actually is with this here I'm going to go and I'm going to edit the mesh here. Let's see if we can do it from here. I search shadow. Okay, I can't. All right, never mind about that. Save that, close that out. Um, save this to, there we go. All these level bounds, I don't want them to be lit with shadows. 
So what I'm going to do, instead of manually selecting them, I'm going to go into our folder here that we made. And select all of them at once. And then from here, there should be an option down in lighting. Cast shadow, turn that off. And also just for the sake of the floor, we don't need that. Casting a shadow either. There we go. And you can just save all. Save selected. There we go. Okay, so problem fixed. Now we can see the back here without much problem. There's a few other areas of super darkness. Um, but the lighting and the details, that would be something that we'd have to sort of account for. Also, oh yeah, um, you clearly don't see the player. So the sort of visibility fix that we did before will have to be adjusted in a different way. So we're going to have to do pretty much a de line trace, detection trace, um, which will involve something called a projection. So we'll worry about it in a later video, um, later live stream about how we're going to fix that. Uh, just a little sort of sneak peek of what is to come. So, anyways, next part we're going to go into, we have sort of a little, I guess, an S shape wall that we're going to have to build out. So, you're going to do the same thing as before and go to this poly extent, X mode. Uh, um, okay, there we go. All right, so let's see here. We want this to be, let's make it relatively tight. Yeah, okay, I think that's a good spot to start. Okay. And then... Here we go. Ooh, nice, uh, thick wall. Here we go. And then... Uh... Make this, yeah, nah, rather, mm, nah, it'll be a four. It's, it's still gonna be a wide quarter. Okay, so I don't have to worry too much about that being a problem. All right, so then we're gonna just draw this like this here. I'm gonna make sure that it maintains at least a two wide thickness. Actually, no, we're gonna go with a three wide thickness. So it's not gonna be exactly grid based. Ooh, actually, three wide complicates things. We can go stick with two wide. There we go. That's um, not quite an S shape. Hmm. Actually, looking at the original map design, I don't think we're going to go with that. I'm going to go make a little variation. So, what I'm going to do is make a wall that actually is more based around the uh, wall that we have existing up here. So, one, two, three, four. Let's go with four here. So, there we go. And then, I'm go with that. So, that's uh, one, two, three. And then I'll just make it four, like before. And then... Go with two. There we go. All right. And then there we go. Yeah. So this is definitely is a different shaped wall. Um, compared to previously. Map, prototype input level, and then even though it's not really an S shape, um, I'll call it uh, wall four underscore back mid center.
There we go. There we go. All right. Yeah, I think that'll prove to be uh, some good. Um, not super tight or claustrophobic, um, but still uh, good in terms of restricting the overall movement of the players. All right, so minus 500, positive 500. We'll do the same thing again, just scale negative one. All right, there we go. Okay, so there we go. We have uh, about two sixths of the map done. <clears throat> so, relative to this here, so we got this area pretty much done. This area more or less um, done. Yeah, that looks good. And we have this area sort of started. It's not necessarily complete though. Um, it actually is something that I think I'm going to start to modify a little bit. So I'm going to move actually this wall back here using a poly edit mode. I'm going to move this back a little bit. There we go. And then the change is going to get reflected there. Do the same thing with this here. All right, there we go. Move that back, give a little more space for the next set of walls. So this is going to be the sort of area that players can loop around in <coughs> upcoming. So I'm going to do polyx mode again so that we can get nice precise placements. And make it three. So I think three, um, this is uh, 300 units um, across is a pretty good sort of size for the player movement um it wouldn't be super tight and restrictive so um give a little bit of uh, like dodging i guess for players when if they're like trying to dodge uh, lasers or uh, whatever like projectiles or whatnot that we're going to be using so anyways this sort of middle section here then goes back here hmm can we reuse that wall? I think we can. Mm. No, we won't think about reusing it quite yet. Let's go with four, yeah, let's make this thick. All right, and then, yeah, I need to change my map folder. Uh, my concept folder down here. Maps, prototype gameplay level. Uh, this will be wall rect for a rectangle. Um, mid uh quarter it's roughly around it um then uh the level name yeah that's right prototype gameplay level there we go all right click accept there now we have our little wall there we're gonna uh, complete and then we're gonna duplicate it over here. We don't need to flip it or anything like that because it's already mirrored. Okay. And then what actually I'm going to do for our next part, I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to move it right, right in front. Yeah, alright. Okay. All right, well, with that dealt with, we're gonna go back poly edit mode, poly X mode again. I'm gonna build the remaining part of this wall over here. So let's see here. I wanted this to wrap around the little center walls that we made. So one, two, three, and we get a bit 
bit tight up here. Yeah, even though that, that's not tight. So one, two, three. Okay, there we go. And then just stop it right up there. There we go. Match it up with that right there. All right. And I didn't change the map directory again. The constant forward directory, I mean. Um, this will be... Since this is the same thing as essentially wall three, we'll go wall three, underscore front, mid, prototype, uh, okay, play, level, spelling is bad, okay. There we go. And then this wall here, we're gonna move this back one. There we go. Do the same thing as before, once again, flipping the level over and then it's, uh, sort of lost its imprecision a little bit. So do that, there we go, all right. I'm gonna do a quick test here, just for uh, maneuverability's sakes. Oh yeah, actually this is kind of fun. So I'm navigating this around. Um, other than the this issue right here, I think um, I think uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of good, interesting opportunities. Maybe um, sort of open it up just a little bit um, to let the player move around a little bit more. Um, I think we can probably work out that a little bit later, but um, yeah, with that, I think we're on to the final um, sort of uh, section for the map. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much copy all this and then we're just going to paste it onto the other end. Uh, oh, one second. Oh, no. Uh, it just, it, okay, great. Um, quick check here. I'm going to select all these walls and I'm going to place them into our folder, make sure it's organized, and then we'll hit walls underscore. Hold on. And select these, we'll make a subfolder actually. Boom. And then because they are on the negative X side, so minus X, there we go. So these are all the walls on the negative X side of our level. So back to our friend PolyX. And we're going to go make the final couple of walls. So the way I'm going to do this, actually, I'm going to probably, yeah, we're going to reuse. So I'm going to go with four. And then we're going to go with, let's go with something narrow. So give a lot of room to move around <clears throat> out here. Go with aligning with that wall back there. And then then change the directory again and keep saying I need to do that, but I forgot to do that. Okay, so this is rect. Uh, this will be wall rect two underscore mid underscore pro. Pro site gameplay level. There we go. Save that. Complete. All right, let's see here. So I'm gonna duplicate it over here, match it up with that wall like we did before. And then we have, hmm. Actually, we're gonna move this back because that was the sort of intent of the level design that I had for the this middle wall here to be aligned with these two over here. So with that in mind, I'm actually going to extend this out a little bit. Um, all right, poly edit mode. And extend it out to there. Move these over yonder. There we go. We have um, some room there to uh, sort of experiment with. We'll see. 
maybe there's something that we can do there. And then, um, these walls, actually, I'm going to extend them out uh, more. Make them that wide. Check that. Okay, that's good. And then we're going to duplicate them again. Ooh. So I that's not even. Can't get good symmetry that way. Um, so we're going to delete that. We're going to re create this wall actually so I'll drag that we can also drag it out from the content drawer um, and then we'll mirror it over all right and then I don't like this pivot here so we're gonna fix that real quick um, that's because we moved the wall around so the pivot didn't really change um, but we can fix that so if you go over to the pivot button here and just click let's see here where this is the pivot currently pivots at the bottom so we'll just click bottom and then it will recenter itself to the very bottom of the object click, click accept and there we go and it updates for that one as well okay let's see here oh wow oh, actually there's that's an issue so we ended up reusing the walls over here. Oh boy. And actually, oh no, that changed. Oh, ew. Okay, we're not gonna, <laughs> we're actually not gonna update the pivot because that ruined way too much. Okay, there we go, that looks better, except we still have this issue up here because we're reusing the same walls. Hmm. So I think we're gonna delete these and actually place them with the smaller walls that we have. There we go. Okay. Yeah, alright, something like that. Hmm. Would that work? Hold on. I'm going to make this actually smaller. Okay. Uh, there we go. Poly edit load. So I'm going to move this back to about there. I'm do the same thing with these ones as well. And then we have more room for these. There we go, looks better. Then this one, yeah, good. This one created a little bit more room as well. So I can move this up there. Move it down. Three and three, there we go. So that's four and four and four, okay. One more th thing I'm gonna do move these up. Actually, I'm not going to move these up. I'm going to move them back here. Actually, no, let's try something else. I'm going to rotate them. Ooh, they are not aligned anymore after being rotated. So I'm gonna recenter the pivot and just fix the other uh, blocks that we got. Okay, we won't do center pivot. How about? Okay, there we go. 
pivot will do because they were aligned with the world axes. Let's do left. I need to check the world coordinates here. No. And do this exact here. There we go. Okay, so that should be almost at the center. Then we just make this Z value here zero. There we go. Accept. And then that should be able to allow us to re do the orientation of these pretty easily. So there we go. We have that one aligned. And then. These two, we just need to move them back into place. Uh, why are they off? This one's off, okay. There we go. Or not, okay, what? Why is this? It's 200. There we go. Okay. There we go. Okay, so let's see here. Let's make the center passage narrow. Okay, and then this one, stop. Ugh, 500. Okay. Now we should be able to rotate these. And then we can move them into position. There we go. The reason I want to try this out. Actually, you know, there is a room for twice. Two times. Oh boy, no, actually there isn't. Or is there? Nah, there isn't. Eh, actually, no, hold on. This could be interesting. This right here. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I think we can go with this layout here. There we go, we have our basic level and then we can play through half of it. We're gonna go make the other half real quick. Here we go, we can move it around. Some nice tight spots and there's some more open spots here. Middle here, there's a lot more room to uh, move around and whatnot. We can aim, we can fire, we can spin around in any direction. All right, there we go. Okay, so. Now, last thing that we need to do, select everything. Hold on, actually, no, there's an easier way to do this, so we'll just add these all to here. Select everything in here, select all descendants. Copy, Control C, Control V. And then we'll make a new folder, plus X. So now this is this will be everything that's on the positive x-axis. Move that out there. All right, select everything on the positive axis. Take this x scale negative one. I mean positive one, make it negative one. And then we just drag everything. That didn't work. Okay, don't worry. So we'll just go through block by block. We'll make the negatives all positive. So it'll take a little bit of time to do. Um, you could try something else like rotating everything. That could also work. But I think this, um, okay, we're gonna have to duplicate that. That one there or that one there because we those walls are in the center. All right, there we go.
I want to, we might want to fix up the positioning. Uh, okay. Let me see the other side. What are you doing? Hold on. Now we got messed up. Oh, damn. It's supposed to be there. Okay. Good now. Um, negative to positive. All right. There we go. Negative to positive. Negative to positive. And negative to positive. And I think that's it. Nope. That's not it. We have two more. two. Wait, hold on. Uh, these two are no longer symmetric. Okay, so we're going to have to manually move these to their correct positions. They're uh, no longer symmetric in terms of the x-axis mirroring. That's to be specific. Um, you know, actually, hold on. I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. It's by one unit. There we go, accept. Okay, good. Oh boy, we're gonna have to fix a pivot. Let's fix a pivot. sure that these are nice and even. All right, there we go. Yeah, I think that works out uh, pretty well. I think that we got quite a bit done for uh, the tonight's live stream. So now we can play it out and try it out, you know, navigate around a little bit to the tight and uh, wide corners as well. Go to the other side. Oh boy, that's uh, that's not symmetric. I'm missing this wall here. Extrude number 10. Ah, uh, bah, that's why. Okay. One thing we need to fix. Let me move this out to there. All right, there we go. So now let's do a quick check here. Make sure that everything looks symmetrical. And okay, now it does. Save everything. Click play. And now we can move around. Yeah, this is good. You know, I'm thinking, uh, I think I like the level layout, but I think, um, in terms of, uh, sort of laser tag or something like that, um, we can probably do something a little more interesting. We'll, uh, discuss it next week. I think we got a lot of good progress done, uh, this week, though, so we can go, we're going to submit our content here. Um made a uh, level white box there we go submit that and then while that's submitting we're going to go into the main folder <clears throat> make sure that everything got submitted so go to library go into live game here shown folder right click sv and commit anything we got to commit nope all right looks good all right Oh, that'll be it for this live stream. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'm going to go to the end screen here. Maybe we'll go to the end screen if uh, OBS and Matrix worked. <laughs> Hello. Hello. 
this thing gonna work? Hand scrub. There we go. Okay. There we go. All right. So yeah, and uh, make sure you guys uh, subscribe for more um, and follow as well and whatnot. Um, be sure to stay tuned for uh, recent updates on the various products that we are doing over at Quantonium. And yeah, be sure to check in next week and for part six of the game development live stream. Um, next part, we're going to be probably refining the initial gameplay the idea that we had and also starting to add the map elements to um, get our match play working. Um, probably also be in setting up a sort of match routine timer um, so we can get started with testing out um, developing game modes so yeah it'll be a lot of uh, interesting stuff going forward anyway see you guys uh, next time <laughs>